Hi. Um, I was just doing some phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? Phone witnessing? Mm-hmm. Sharing a scripture, who are, you know. Who, who are you, ma'am? Christine. What's your name? Scott. Okay. Who are you uh, affiliated with? Oh, I'm just here by myself right now. I'm just a Christian. You know, I like talking about the Lord and the scriptures. Excellent. Well, that's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. Can I share a scripture with you? You sure may. Okay. Um, well, the scripture is Matthew 28, um, 18 and 19. Okay. Um, it says, well, what I have in the ESV, it says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Very good. So, um, I was looking up authority, the authority of Jesus on the um, the website jw.org, um, and it says. You're Jehovah's the, Witness. Am I a Jehovah's Witness? No, no. I just some Jehovah's okay. Witness tell me always to look on the website. Oh yes. So it's very handy. To it look is. Up yeah, about, yeah, we got a lot on there. Yeah, I wish the publications would go back a little further than just 1950. But um, anyway, it's it's still interesting. Um, well, I was looking at the authority of Jesus, and it said he did not receive uh, authority on earth until 1914. But this scripture says that all authority in heaven and on earth, all authority has been given to him. I was just wondering, how do they reconcile that? Well, when he died and he went to heaven and he sat on his, uh, at his father's side until he put his enemies at his feet, he was given all authority. Mm-hmm. In heaven he and took, on earth. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. But as he took that authority and applied that authority, <clears throat> it wasn't until he established his kingdom in the heaven, which according to chronology, put it at, at uh, the year 1914, when he kicked Satan out of heaven and he established his heavenly kingdom. Now, he had authority and he was exercising that authority in uh, in other ways, as in getting the preaching done. That scripture you had in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, said to go and make disciples preaching. So he was exercising that authority on the earth. Well, that doesn't say the word preaching. Uh, That's kind of presumed in there. But um, uh, no, I don't really understand what you're saying. I don't see a scripture that says he, you know, in Acts chapter 2, it even says he was, when he resurrected and ascended, that fulfilled the prediction that he would sit on David's throne. One of the descendants would sit on David's throne forever and ever. So he was actually right. even enthroned also. He, he was. But you got to um, remember the uh, parable that he gave when he talked about the um, rich man that went away mm-hmm. for a while. Mm-hmm. And then when he came back, he went away to acquire kingly, kingly power. Now, he was already the rich man. He already had authority. So um, and this was a he was teaching his apostles and the disciples that it was going to be a little bit of a time lag before. Uh, he exercised that kingly power as the Messiah. You know, the the uh, kingdom had yet to be established. So there was a lot of things to be done. And so there's there's a time lag in there that he was indicating to his disciples because they, they expected he was going to establish the kingdom right then and there. They thought it was going to be established on earth. In fact, they kind of, apparently from the way they <laughs> talked about it, they thought it was going to be established with him as king right there, and they're going to be his co-rulers right then and there. <clears throat> you know, when James and John were wanting to, uh, debating on who gets to sit on his right side and who on his left side, you know. Well, so when you um, try to build a large them. doctrine like that out of a parable, um, you know, when you study... No, that's not a doctrine. That's just, that's not a doctrine. What it's it's a very is crucial it? doctrine in the Watchtower Society that Jesus took authority in 1914. But anyways, another thing I noticed on the website is uh-huh. they keep showing this part of Matthew 28:19, And it, it says, the way they actually put it in quote marks, it says, um, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, period, quotation mark. And I wonder why they don't like the rest of it. I've seen that quoted on there so many times, even before some of their talks and videos. Why would they put a period there and quote Mark? Well, baptizing them, go there mm-hmm. for preaching. The point that if you read the context, 
See, every time that I have a conversation with somebody that, that likes to play with the uh, website and find little yeah. quotations, um, what you're doing is you're, you're not getting the context of the statement. The context of the statement was the preaching work that gets done. And Jehovah's Witnesses uh, get that done to the tune of over 2 billion hours a year around the world in 114,000 congregations unitedly preaching God's kingdom, Jesus as the king of that kingdom, and what we need to do to be available to be part of that kingdom. So, um, yeah, I would never, I would never quote, I would never misquote scripture like that by putting a period where where there's still the rest of it, the verse, and uh, they use so many partial We do not misquote it and put a period. We don't put a period. Oh, do you want me to send you some links to that so you can see it? They do put a period after baptizing them and then quotes. As though that's yeah. the whole thing, or the end of a sentence, even. I just well, wonder if they might not like that phrase, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, which which shows triunity as well as unity in the one name, and then mentions the three persons. So I could see why they maybe don't well, like I, that. I, I, see, I see what you're going for, uh-huh. and I'm not going to take a bait and argue with you. Oh, no, no, Father, it's just so Son, obvious. The, well, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are... Uh, that's what you're baptizing in. People come to know. Because in, in uh, John 17, 3, what did Jesus say? This means everlasting life. Coming to know or taking in knowledge or learning about Jehovah, God, and the Son that he sent forth. That's where yeah. knowledge comes from. And you do that It's good, the though, that the they Holy change took in knowledge, taking in knowledge to what Christians and the Bibles have knowing because it means uh like it connotates like a personal relationship so i was glad to see they they changed that and realized that taking in knowledge was wrong uh, it doesn't mean that um i think they used to use taking in knowledge because it makes um, people that don't know the bible think it means do a study with jehovah's witnesses <laughs> right <laughs> no ma'am you're, yeah, it you're, does. you're, you're looking for I, I, i've been preaching from door to door and having Bible studies with people. I'm 67 years old. I've been doing this since I was a teenager. And I've read that scripture, and I've sat down with with ministers of other religions and missionaries of other religions, and we've discussed even that scripture. And nobody has ever even inferred that that was an application. What it is is taking a knowledge, learning. That's all. No, they, they, they explained in one of the articles why they changed it. It had to do with the linguistics, not because of some kind of a change and a diversion. And, yeah, it and does mean a different thing. And having a personal relationship, knowing that it, besides just taking in knowledge, I could take in knowledge of something and not, it's just impersonal and just like mental assent or whatever. And, you know, it's interesting to me, too, that all Christians from the very beginning, and you can read about it in the Dedicate, which is the earliest Christian writing, emphasize the importance of the baptism verse here as a formula to say and um i just find it interesting that they don't it here it doesn't say say like do you dedicate yourself to the organization like they do when where do they get that we don't we don't ever say dedicate yourself to the organization yeah it's one of the two questions one of the two questions that all the people are sitting there have to say yes to now they changed that since you had joined no, it, it doesn't say dedicate yourself to the organization. Yeah, it says it, dedicate yourself to Jehovah and be recognized as part of the organization. Yeah, it does say organization. So yeah, it, being, it has nothing to do with baptism in the Bible. It, it, has, does, it does not say that yeah. you be dedicated. It, it doesn't that say be, that in, in the Bible anywhere, even even being no, part of it or whatever. We don't say that. We don't yeah. teach it. Okay, or encourage. even saying identify you as one of. Why, why does it say that? Like no other Christians do that. They don't say is identify you as a Presbyterian or this baptism identifies you as going to First Baptist Church of Milwaukee or something like that. It doesn't. It, they just say what Jesus said, you know. I just find it really interesting. Well, the reason is because we believe that in a worldwide scope of things, Jehovah's Witnesses are the only organization that carry Jehovah's name. We are the only organization that teach it and preach it uh, actively throughout the world. We're the only organization where 100% of our active members are actually ministers uh, actively preaching. Some of your members, some of your active members are just in it 
for their families. And there's actually hundreds of them that write about it. They're called physically in, mentally out because they don't want to be shunned. So I don't, I don't well, think that's they're, a. They're, they're, Sure, there, there, there are some. That, There's a lot. There's even <laughs> higher up ones. You know how people can tell. Ma'am, it, ma'am, you can say that about any organization. Oh, definitely. Always, but but that wasn't the claim people. that you made. But they, cl- you, eight, they claim to be an different. an organization of eight and a half million. Um, now, so when we say, like, just for instance, let me give you this. There's about eight and a half million Jehovah's Witnesses that are um, baptized, dedicated to do God's will, and preach. Okay. There's probably closer to 40 or 50 million people who are baptized that call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses, that attend meetings, and are, they don't preach. But when we say there's 8.5 million, they're not counted as part of that 8.5 million. But we count as 8.5 million those that are active in the preaching activity. And if they haven't been preaching in a year, they're not considered active. If they haven't been preaching in six months, probably. Right, not. right. You get in big trouble so, for that, and you could lose your salvation. No, no, there's no, there's no, there's no big trouble. We see somebody oh, that see. maybe okay. needs a little encouragement, help. Encouragement. So you, you call you're it. not looking for, you're not, ma'am. Can I speak freely? Sure. You're not looking to uh, in, to encourage Bible use. You're not looking to. To try to do anything other than deflame. I asked you the why they say organization when they're baptized, when there's no, they claim everything's based on the Bible. The word organization isn't even in the Bible. And so they have to, the, you have to say that when every person is baptized. That's not in the Bible. It, Jesus said to continue associating together. Paul said in Hebrews sure. 10 to associate together sure. in an organization. He didn't mention organization um, for baptism, though. Nowhere. It's said, not in the book of Acts said, either. Now, in, in Acts, he said there would be a people for my name. All of these indications, and, and in, the, in the original, in, in Hebrew, the uh, Hebrew organization, you had to be part of the nation of Israel. Right. Well, they did away with that. When and they the New Covenant was, was prophesied in Isaiah and Jeremiah. Well, actually, Jeremiah and, and Ezekiel. And one of the comments that the, from those verses is that the New Covenant would not be like the Old Covenant. So it is very different. And it's not an organization. It's an organism united by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. Except the great crowd isn't in the body of Christ, so I don't know where they fit in. That's a whole other interesting topic. So you're, not, you're, you're just looking for one argument after another, and I, I, I'm really very busy. Why do you guys call really it that? For, I think so. they just teach you to say that I, to shut down your thoughts. I, no. Yeah. See, because... You're just you arguing. Another, we don't debate. Did, did you know that um, we produce and distribute our literature and the Bible on our website in over a thousand languages? So what? It could be done through um, translation programs now. Anybody could do it. And if you look up Wycliffe Bible yeah, Translators, well, they've been doing it for longer. And they don't say you have to join them to become saved or to get eternal okay. life on paradise on earth. So, And they're also yeah. better trained. Look up Wycliffe Bible Translators okay. sometime. I've, I've enjoyed conversations. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. You're, you're not looking for any reality. You're just looking for some I, I think so you're in the unreality. Your okay. Enjoy it too. God bless and you. And I will say a prayer for you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Bye. Our show can involve Joe's witnesses. Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. Um, I was just doing some phone. One second. Oh, okay. Go, go ahead. I was just doing some phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? Oh, this is the this is the Kingdom Hall of Joe's witnesses in Hartsville. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, I don't mind. Uh, okay, who is this? Christine. What's your name? Uh, okay, uh, sis, uh, are you are you doing phone witnessing? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Answer. Okay, so again, you've called the Kingdom Hall. I'm just right. up here. I'm. A, I'm. My name is Brother Barnhart. I'm just up here doing some uh, routine uh, checks on the hall. Oh yeah. You know the rumor is going about that uh, they're selling them off like at a rapid pace. Is that true? Uh, okay, sis. I really do have to go, but I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Could I ask you one question real quick? Go ahead. Well, it's about the convention. Like uh, I like to learn about like religion, and I was listening to some of the hosted convention talks well the virtual one you know um Uh and this guy on there i think he's one of your leaders um he gave us like whole really long talk about um salvation hello 